So, some people in the last video, this one, wanted to know how I make these. Well, young viewers, whatever, weary travelers or something, I don't know. From scratch, I'm going to be doing a, uh, Twisty T truck. We're going to do it step by step, and if this takes 40 minutes, I'm going to be mad, but that'll just have to be how it is. So, these are the templates that I use. CWS 2015 underscore templates. I don't actually remember how you get these. If I could, like, resend for, like, the, uh, the link that I clicked to download it, that'd be great, but I can't. I don't actually know the link. Oh, whatevs. It's all good. It's all good. I don't, I don't care. So, we're just going to do a random truck. So, this is the one that came up first. I just went into my list of what I needed to do, and I just clicked like that, and I got that one. Well, actually, I got eight. I had seven highlighted for some reason. That makes sense. But anyway, yeah. Plus, it's only one on the list, so we know which one we're doing, so that's helpful. Okay. So, since it's a Dodge, we're going to open up the Dodge one. I don't actually know how to make these templates, so it's a good thing they were made beforehand, which is helpful. Very helpful. Most of the most of the time, people turn off the mask. It'll do that. Yeah, it'll, it'll turn off the mask, and lots of times they don't have like the uh, shading, so you don't actually know where things start and where things end. It's very complicated that way. Anyway, so this is a truck. I'm going to remove the driver banner on the back, not the banner, but the name driver, so that anyone that could ever find this truck could use it for themselves if they so chose. I get my own color going on. Usually, I leave it at a white or a black. So I can, like, determine later what the color is actually going to be. And then you turn off the wire. I don't know why the wire is a thing. It's just there. But now, we got ourselves a truck. So, um, at this point, we're going to save it at the, uh, stop fucking, okay. Yeah, here's all the ones that I've already made. So let's do, uh, 87, what? No, that's not 87. 87, whatever the fuck this name is going to be. Henry Durand, all right. There you go. The uh, file names in um, NR2003 can only be a certain length, so that's why I shorten the names in the file name. All righty, so let's start off with the number. As, as you saw in this video, it's a poor decision to get everything to, um, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but to, uh, fuck, I'm stupid. This is the worst video ever, I apologize. Um, it's a bad idea to put down anything that you don't want to edit later. So, what you saw when I did the 94 is that I rasterized the, uh, effects, but that meant that I couldn't, like, edit the numbers so that I could change its color and shit. Yeah, don't do that. So, since this is going to be 87, we could probably do a NEMA check. It's number 87. If someone wanted to do a 78, I'd do the seven, I'd do the Truex 78. And then I'd just invert that and make that into the 87. They could be teammates, but I don't have anyone that wanted to be 78. So, we're just going to say screw it and pick up a 87 from here. The best one that you can do is one like this. Like this is high res... Um, it's flat. It's not looking at an oblique angle like this. If it'll fucking long. If it, yeah, like this one. See, this is a bad number for multiple reasons. Um, it's really small because the image must have gotten deleted and now all this, all that exists anymore is this template. Or not template, but like, freaking, I don't know. This is a good one though because it's looking straight at you. So you don't have to like skew it in Photoshop. If, if I ever wanted to show you how to skew a number off of a car in Photoshop, maybe we'll do that some other time. So now that we got that, um, when you open the file new, be sure your preset is clipboard after you've copied the uh, image that you're trying to take. Okay, so here's where I would determine how I'm going to be taking the number off of this image. This is the quick selection tool. When you have it and you click in a space, it'll automatically select everything for you. If you can, this is usually the easiest way to go about getting a number or other stuff such as that. 
as long as the uh, colors match the whole way through. So if it's like a gradient effect on whatever you're trying to pick out, it usually is a lot more stubborn. But um, yeah, for this 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 image, this is a great image. So we're going to just leave it like this for now. As you saw with the JC1424 car, I did too much editing on that before. It was a good time to do that. So, as you can see, we're going to be making a Hot Wheels truck, which is awesome. I'm going to, as you've seen before, I've made um, tribute schemes. We're going to do the Kyle Petty Hot Wheels car. Hot Wheels. Oh my god, I cannot type. Oh, that was pretty sad right there. Okay. Hot Wheels. All right. So, um... Let's get a good picture that we can see, like, the vast majority of the car, like this one. This iRacing scheme, someone already made it. I feel like I'm lagging behind a bit, but whatever. So I like to have one picked out so I can, like, uh, reference it while I'm making the scheme itself. So, um, we probably won't do this loop. I'll do something else for the loop instead. We'll get really creative. We'll get really creative. Should be fun. So, yeah, while that loads, I'm just gonna look at Twitter. Jeremy Kyle takes a chainsaw to pro-war media coverage. Mm. That sounds like a quality video, does it not? Okay, so we copy that, open up a new one, make sure the preset's clipboard, and just paste it there so it's there, so I... <clears throat> Jesus, I'm burping all the... I'm just, this is the worst video ever made, I apologize. Okay, so the wheels are already red, so that's very convenient. These wheels, if you wanted to change their color, you just right-click on them, the wheel comes up. You can always also go to this section here and then go to color and you go to color overlay. And then this is how you change the colors around. So if you want to like gay pride it up in here, just go down the rainbow of colors. But since it was already red, we'll just leave it at red because that's the color of the wheels on this. And the wheels on the bus right there. So perfect. Don't even need to change that shit. Perfect. So let's get the Hot Wheels logo ready to go. My internet is so slow, Joe DiMaggio. Rhyming up in here. Got my world's best driver, there you go. That would be accurate if you pinned it next to uh, Kyle Petty. That's the that's Hot Wheels logo that should have been on his car. Ever since he started being sponsored by Hot Wheels. So this is the there's a reason that I'm picking this one specifically. Mostly because it's kind of got a, um, yeah, it's really clear like there's clearly a background here and it's not low res and the jpeg level isn't off the chart so it won't bleed into the white background it's kind of also got a bevel to it that helps when you're pasting shit on here okay so we're gonna make this a blue car obviously uh probably around that that's pretty good so now for shading now shading there's two presets shading and multiply um, on this occasion, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with shading. You can do both. Maybe we'll do both. Screw it, we'll do both. So, now that I'm done with that, I can delete that and just paste over it. And there you go. See, it's out of bounds because I didn't actually make it its own, um, window. I didn't go to file new and use the clipboard preset so that it would be able to fit. Because I did it on an old one, it doesn't automatically, you know, fit into the the uh, image size. That's what Photoshop calls it, is the image size. So this is color range. You go to select and you go to color range. And if you click on the white space here, this makes selecting um, things out of a white background much easier. So um, if you go to fuzziness here... So if you're again, if you got a really low fuzziness, you can get some of that JPEG feedback that bleeds into the white background. Well, you're not gonna want that. So what you gotta do is go up in the fuzziness. But when you do that, parts of the white that you do want are gonna go out. So you need to find a fair enough compromise so that it isn't too difficult to get everything back. And then once you do have your color range that you like selected, you just go to the uh, quick select feature, and then you just grab it. There, now we have it cut out. And now it's, well, it's, I'm gonna have to defringe it, but also, and to, so as you can see, there's no longer a white background. Now, if I had just gone here, copied it, and then slapped it into this, there'd be the white background, and you'd have to take it out either way. 
And it's a lot easier to do it on a completely separate thing because you have the mask and you have all these little bits and pieces here because as you can see, the 87 goes behind the roof flap even though um, um, it's part of the truck and not part of the 87. So Now you see the little bit of white space there? Well, we can get rid of that by going to defringe. You defringe by about five usually depending on the size of your uh, image. You go to the fringe, and that gets rid of it. It basically just uh, kind of it kind of deletes out white, and then smooths out the edges of your selection, so that if you uh, this is pretty uh, quick and nasty, but um, if you do this, so now it automatically slings onto whatever uh, you have. So now it's a lot more smooth. So now let's deselect that, and let's put this where it belongs on the hood. On the hood. In the hood. No, it has to go on the hood. If it goes in the hood, you can't see it, silly kamikaze. What is wrong with you? So, some keyboard shortcuts. If you use Alt, and you click on a, a layer, whatever your layer is, that will duplicate it. If you use, if you hold the Shift button, and then move your thing around, it'll go on a straight line. So if you got like a freaking Parkinson's, if you got Parkinson's and you're shaking all over the place and you just wanted to go straight up and down from where it was before, then you can use the shift button and you can have all the Parkinson's in the world, but it will still stay locked on that vertical axis. So that's beautiful. Actually, no, I should have kept that. You can do both at the same time. So you can duplicate it while holding shift and then you can move it up and down. That's how I do the numbers on the doors. So I actually wanted to have this so uh, it's hanging off the back here. And that's kind of you kind of have to eye it when you're aligning things. So if you so when you want to kind of move something gently around the page, you use the directional buttons and that will nudge it a couple of pixels. There's a way that you can set how many pixels a nudge will uh move your image by, but I don't actually know how to and I'm too lazy to figure out. So Let's right click on this layer. I want to make it just a little bit bigger. There we go. Hot wheels. Yeah. Okay, so that'll be nicely slapped on the hood there. So now we're gonna make a graphic. So we're not gonna do this graphic, but we're gonna do something similar. We'll kinda we'll kinda do a petty swoop in a sense. Because this is how I've made several of my trucks already. Let's go. Okay, that's not the right direction. Go here. Which one has a swoop in it that I can... I think specifically the Corbin one is a good example. Oh shit, I opened the... I opened the file so it's going to open up in paint.net. I don't want that. I wanted to open in here. So as you can see, these are the swoop de whoops on the Waters paint scheme here. Making these swoop de whoopsies go away. Yeah, making these, these swoop de whoopsies go away, I said. There's a way that you can do that in Photoshop. It's kind of complicated, but it's also a lot easier than doing it in like paint and shit. But okay, so we're gonna do a swoop de whoop de on this side. That's kind of gonna look like this, but not quite. So let's open up a new one. And for the preset, we're going to do the uh, file that I'm working in right now, the one that I'm making the truck in. And that'll just make it really, really big so I have a lot of space to work with. It won't actually just duplicate it. It'll just make it really, really big. So, um, this blue color right here, we're going to go to this. This is the paint eyedropper tool. So we're going to... Okay, I can't actually click it on there. I thought I could click it on there. All right, well, we're just going to have to approximate it here. So there you go. Uh, not quite. Uh, I think that would be good. All right, so now we got this. We're gonna go. We're gonna start making shape. First, we're gonna start off with a rectangle, and that's gonna be our background. So this is the same color, pretty much, kind of, not really, but close enough to this truck. So thereby, um, you'll see. You'll you'll figure it out. Okay. So we're gonna make a swoopy whoopy. And we're going to use the colors from the Hot Wheels logo. So we're going to have, um, we'll have a yellow and we'll have ourselves a red. And those two red colors are going to appear 
once we go back into okay i didn't want that gray but whatever once we go back to this tool so this is the fill section so all of those colors that i um boopity booped in except for the blue apparently hang on a second let's see if that does it now yes okay so here's the blue that's close enough to the truck itself this is the red from the hot wheels logo this is the yellow from the hot wheels logo we're gonna make ourselves a shroopy whoop now i don't have any other way of calling that it's a shroopy whoop so we start out with the blue background in our case we start out with a background that's a rectangle then we make an ellipse now with this tool still selected and with the ellipse layer still selected you go up to fill and you pick whichever color you want so now we got ourselves a big old circle and that's nice and nice and all but we need to make a swoopy whoop that kind of looks like this but not quite so how do we do that well we're going to duplicate this layer and fill it to the exact same blue that is the background there now it may look like we've accomplished nothing but here's where your nudging comes in with your directional buttons on your keyboard so you go to the move tool that's right that that, 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 that that is this one right here this is the move tool I'm pretty sure I don't actually know the exact term I saw a flash there for move tool I was right damn I'm smart and then you start nudging it with your directional buttons and now we're making ourselves a shroopy doop all right now we'll deselect that, and now you can see we got ourselves a nice little shoopy whoop. Perfect. Now it's not quite done yet. We're also going to have a yellow shoopy whoop, but this one's going to be smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this one, the blue one. We're going to duplicate the blue one, and we're going to go to the tool, fill it to the yellow. Boogity boogity. Look at that. Now, here's what we're going to do to this. We're going to shrink. Okay, so when you... Sh okay, let's undo that. So, I don't know if this is just my Photoshop that works like this, but when you click on the edge, you get the option to freely transform it. Now, unlike PowerPoint and Microsoft Word, when you go from a corner, it'll keep the dimensions. But on this program, you can just freaking go all over. You can just go crazy. But we don't want that. Hold down the shift button and then go to a corner. Then it will shrink proportionally and everything will be great. So you won't mess up like the shape of your whatchamacallit, that, that, that whatever you're trying to make. So now I'm going to shrink it just a little bit, not too much. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. I'm sure there's a better, there's a more uh, efficient and like professional way to do this, but I'm just going to eyeball it. So now it's kind of just like um, kind of in the center kind of in the center close enough so that we can duplicate this one again duplicate go to the shape tool go to the fill and go to the background color now there's another way that you can do this you can shift and then go in a direction and it should go in a diagonal direction but it's so finicky and only occasionally with there we go so you can also do it like this but um it's a lot harder to uh do with um, a guaranteed success rate. It's not a guarantee that you're gonna get it right the first time. So now we got our swoopy dupes. But we're not done yet. Now we need to select every layer and rasterize these layers because they won't merge correctly if you don't rasterize them. And that just basically makes it so they're not a shape anymore. So when you go to the shape tool, you can't you know change the color just by clicking on it and all that good shit, see? I, that would have made it red, but now it doesn't. Sure. Now what are we going to do? Well, then we reselect all that again. Now we merge the layers. Now we've created one big layer with just this logo on it. What we can do after this is go to the Marquee Select tool right underneath the Move tool. And highlight the whole thing. Give yourself some clearance because Photoshop is nice and it'll usually... Um, clean up your images if you make them too too small and you have to enlarge them usually it'll clean it up i'll give a tutorial on how to clean up images that don't work like that in a later date but for now we go back to the move tool after you've rectangularly marqueed it and then you do this so now we've moved this whole image into this uh truck file here 
So now we can shrink it down a bit, and um, now we can move it to where it's going to be. And you can rotate it. If you use the shift key, it'll rotate it like increments of 15 degrees. But now that we got it the way uh, that it needs to be, we got it like this. Okay, so we're going to shrink it just a little bit more. I'd say that's a good enough size. Uh, that'll do. Okay. So now, as you can see, it isn't exactly the same color as the background. Well, hey, that's some shit. Well, <laughs> the best way to remedy this is to turn off the multiply and turn off the shading. And now we edit it from here. So, go to the color fill, choose that, and now everything's wonderful again. Then you can turn back on your shadings, and it's like nothing. And it's like it's, it's, like it's supposed to be there. It's like it's supposed to be there. Perfection. Wouldn't you say? Isn't that a nice little shroopy doop? It might be a little bit too tall, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it downwards a little bit. And now it's too small altogether, so let's increase its size. And there we go. See, you saw how it was a bit jagged when I made it bigger, but when I pressed enter and changed and saved the changes, it uh, it smoothed it back out again. So that's what you can do with some smaller uh, images if you ever need to make them bigger. So there you go. Basically, there's our little shroopy doopy. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that, move it up here. Click that, flip it vertically, and now it's about in the same spot. Got to eyeball it from there. And now we got ourselves symmetrical shroopy doopies on either side of the truck. Isn't that cool? So that's how you make graphics like this. It's a lot of nudging. It's a lot of resizing. It's a lot of bullshit, honestly, is what it is. It's a lot of bullshit. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to make another shroopy doopy. And this one's going to be a bit bigger and a bit longer. So how we can do this quickly without having to start all over is go before we rasterized our layers. Go back to when we moved it last. And now we can go and this is the history panel, by the way. You use this to go back in time, pretty much. It saves your states, pretty much. It saves the states in which you were at, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So now we don't, we no longer have these rasterized. We can re-edit re them now. So I can make this one freaking green if I wanted to. So it's wonderful now. What we're gonna do here is we're going to select all of them, go to our move tool. We're just gonna make them a bit wider and just a little bit taller. So there we go. I'm gonna make it a bit more flat. Okay, this should be good enough. Hopefully. So, since it's not rasterized yet, um, Photoshop will continuous, continuously kind of re-map out the pixels. And basically what it is, it just uh, keeps it high res. It doesn't make it all blurry and stupid shit like that. So, now that we've made it a bit wider and a bit taller and all that good stuff, we are going to, uh, quick before we do this, we're going to, um, actually no. It's, it's fine now. Forget I said anything. We're going to rasterize the layers. And then we're going to merge them again. Perfection. Let's go back to the rectangular marquee tool. And there you go. Now we got ourselves a second shroopy doopy. And this one's going to go like this. We're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Which you can do by holding down shift and going like that. Or you can go right click and it will rotate 180 degrees for you. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So now that's all figured out. We can shrink it down. So it's the size here. And uh-oh. 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 Do you see what I see? Oh, no. Disaster has struck the Kamikaze Games channel. This right click so we can get on it this layer is covering up this layer how in the goddamn name of hell are we going to remedy this well here's where the lasso tool comes in the lasso tool comes in three different three different flavors 
three different varieties, all for $9.99 each. The Magnet Lasso Tool is kind of stupid at times. I don't really like to use it, but it's there. The polygonal lasso tool, which is the most useful out of all of these, and then the lasso tool for just free-handedly doing things. You saw me use the lasso tool when I was trying to make uh, JC-142 Force Funyun's hood. When I was uh, going around the outline of the hood and getting rid of that section of it. So that's what I was doing when I was doing that, was the lasso tool. But we're going to use... Hell, we might actually be even, be even able to use the magneto lasso tool. That'll be easier, maybe. So what we need to do is get rid of the blue that's covering up this. So we're going to go around here. We could also do the um, color range select. But since it's behind all of the uh, shading and all that good stuff. Actually, you know what? That might be easier. Ah, never mind. We'll do it on the other side. We'll do it the other way on the other side because we're going to have to do it on the other side too. So if you zoom in too far, you'll get the individual pixels. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes it isn't. But in us, this case, we're just going to leave it as is. So the magnetic lasso tool will kind of sling itself in a similar sense as the... Um, um, hang on a second. I need to scroll to the left, but I can't scroll to the left. Uh, oh, it does it automatically. Okay, hang on. Back, 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 back. Okay. Yes, it scrolls to the left automatically. Perfect. All right. What was I talking about? So the magnetic lasso tool kind of works like the uh, quick selection tool, in a sense. Um, it'll basically s sling onto... Okay. And whenever you get one that you don't want, you press the backspace button. And if you have a spot where you want to set down one of these markers, um, click the left mouse. So, um, the stuff behind the... Uh, Contingencies doesn't really matter, so I'm just gonna. Okay, that one isn't where I want it to be. Click here and click here. And how does it look down here? Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no! I hate this computer how it does that. Excuse me. Oh, it has one up there. Hang on. Okay. It's a lot of trial and error using these tools. So now that we're down here, we can go like this. Bring it back up this way. We won't do the whole thing because most of it goes behind the contingencies anyway. So we'll just go like that. And then go like that. No, don't want to go there. Like that. This is why I sped up the video and didn't do by play by play because we're, we're going to be here for a freaking hour on this truck. We've already been here for a half an hour. Excuse me. Okay. There. That's good enough for now. So we'll have another click there, another click there. A couple more clicks in this direction. Keep heading up. No. I'll just do a little bit extra just to be safe. No! Go connect! What is your... Pr this is why I said that the magnetic lasso tool isn't as good as the other lasso tools. The polygonal ones and all that. Because it's really annoying. So now I'm just going to click my way around it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go... Back a bit, back a bit, go from here, go up, make sure that I get everything in here so that I'm not going back and doing more stupidity. Once this is all said and done, so now I'll go all the way around. See, I'm trying to select the blue part, that's why I'm going all the way around and not going straight back through again, so. Okay, no, nope, we gotta go back. No, we need to go back. We need to go back. We need to go back. There we go. See, we can see it from here, so I can just kind of follow it all the way around from here now. And there we go. Where does it start? There it is where it starts. I can start there. Press the enter button. And now we got this big old blue section selected. And once we move it, it's now out of the way so that the layer underneath is no longer being hidden by some blue bullshit. So now it's all nice and wonderful. Hooray! Okay, I should have made it more flat. I guess I can rotate it a little bit. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't go behind that swoop, but we might have to compromise here. Okay, I want it to be pretty much vertically going that way. 
So now let's shift and move it to the right. Make sure that all of it is filled to where it needs to be. Okay. This should be good enough. I might have to edit these in the end here. I need to make them uh, resize them a little bit here. Yeah, let's do it from that corner. This is good. This will be good enough. I only made it the shape that they are, so you could get an example of how I make these. So, okay, that's good enough. I was gonna do it the other way on this side, but it'll be much easier if we just do it like this. Okay, so. Now to get this whole graphic to move, we're going to merge both of these layers. Merge and duplicate. I, we can do that by doing like that. Flip it vertically. And we'll move it down and nudge it from here. So there you go. There you go. What you think? Well, I think we have a little bit of an issue because this here and this here, well, those are going to go onto the bed. Uh, they're going to go onto the bed, aren't they? Well, I have a solution for that. And that is what I like to call more rectangular marquees. So, you're going to want to get as close as possible here. Even going within the, you know, the, the pixel range and all that. From here, you're going to select the rectangular marquee and so the corners match the end here. I think you can kind of get what I'm trying to say. Not the inner, but the outer corner. The corners hit the outer edge of both sides of the uh, of the graphic. I'm sorry, this is the worst video ever. And you're gonna make, and you with this still selected, you right click on it, make a layer via copy. Now we're gonna pull out a bit, I'm gonna move it down, as you can see, I have two little rectangles here. Um, soon enough I'm going to have two little rectangles. At this point you can just stretch them out. Because with graphics like this, the way that you, because without, you know, like pictures or like text on the graphics, you can just stretch out like straight up, uh, rec you know, just walls of color basically. Unchanging walls of color. So now we got two stripes that connect both sides across the back end of the truck here. Now I think that's some pretty good shit right there. So there's our graphic. Now we're not really that done designing the truck yet, but I think it's a good enough time that we can start working on the number itself. So, have you ever wondered how Hendrick makes their numbers have that little shadow on them? For example, this little shadow, this little shadow out the back end here. Well, there's a really long and complicated way to do it using the drop shadow feature right there, but we're going to say screw it to that and we're just going to do it ourselves. So here's our 87. Now I want this 87 to be, I'm going to say maybe a dark red. So we're going to go to color overlay, pick up our dark red, is that good enough? Ah, that's a bit too dark. Uh, how's that? That's pretty good. Okay. So we got ourselves an 87. Now that really doesn't stand out from the truck. It kind of just looks like it was painted on last minute and all that good stuff. Well, to be able to make this number pop out, pop out off of the truck here, we're going to do three different layers. So... The easiest way to do this is to duplicate the same layer three times. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to rasterize the color overlay. Do I need to? Nah, I don't need to. Rasterizing the color overlay at this point really doesn't make a difference. So we're going to duplicate it three times. So this one on the top in the layer section is going to be the one on top in the, thing it's in the uh, image itself. Go to the one that's underneath it, and you can do this with as many layers as you want, but I'm going to do three just to make it look like cute and shit. We're going to have one layer be black and one layer be white. Color overlay and white. Ain't that just white privilege in action. Black and white. So, to make a Hendrick shadow on your car, get your 
two or more layers. Keep the one on top completely unchanged. Duplicate it. Go to the one underneath and start nudging. Nudge as much as you want. Doesn't matter. Just as long as you got a shadow. And there's your one and only Hendrix shadow, but we'll do a third one here. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to keep this. I kind of just want to see how it looks beforehand. I actually like this. I think we're going to keep it. And there is your 87. So deselect everything. And there you go. There's your 87. A great way to make your logo or whatever you're trying to make a little give it a little bit of give it a little bit of pop just by doing that in your layers so let's rasterize the layer styles and merge because we're going to be using this 87 and now let's up since it's underneath um, all these other layers that I was making we have to move it up in this over here so that it comes to the front but we got to keep it underneath the multiply and the shading. Otherwise, it's going to look like that. That's just a little bit ridiculous, don't you think? Well, let's see here. So that's just shading. It's really... Ooh, that's colorful. How about with just multiply? Hell, even just turning off shading makes it look better. Multiply. Well, let's keep it, let's keep it like this. Let's keep it like this. I'll change it if people want me to, but... Probably not. Okay, actually, let's let's keep it. Let's keep it the size that it was. There. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's make it bigger. Okay. I just resized it just a little bit there, just to make it kind of you know whatever. It doesn't matter. So let's duplicate it. Make it go over to the other side. Turn it over 180 degrees. Nudge it around to make sure that it's in the right spot. And you got yourself a truck. But we're not quite done yet, now are we? Now this big orange freaking spoiler. You know, if we were driving like a singular wireless AT&T truck, maybe an orange spoiler would be fitting. Well, kind of in the same sense that we did with the wheels. Go to the paintable parts spoiler. Go to the color overlay. And just change it from there. Make it like a blue if we want. We can make it a big old flat white. I think we'll go with blue just to match. And it's also got this little orange piece on it as well. I don't want that. It's called spoiler tape. You can just delete that entirely. And there you go. Now you got that color. Um, these side skirts. I think it would be better to make them flat black. I always click satin. Fuck you. Okay, flat black. There you go. Okay. Now we're in business. So we're just about done here, but we still have to do some secondary sponsors here. Xbox, Logitech, Motorola. So let's start flipping through here. Let's get the Xbox logo. We'll slap it onto the truck somewhere. Okay, so you've seen a couple of trucks where I have... Hang on a second. Which one of these would be a good example of one? I actually remember... I've made so many trucks, I can't even remember everything I made. Isn't that sad? Uh, I'm a loser, baby, so why don't you kill me? Was that one one? Is this one one? I don't even freaking remember. Did I kind of do it in what ifs? Sort of. I guess this is a good enough example. So, back end is black. But the rest of the truck is red. How do you make this convincing? Well, here's what you gotta do. So we're gonna have the Xbox logo on the back. We'll have Xbox, we'll have the green on the back here. And it'll bleed into the blue. So this one's probably the easiest one we could do. Um, Xbox One. That is a machine and a half, ain't it? Okay, so... Let's go back here again, get rid of that, plop that in. You know what, we don't even need to edit it, we can just slap it in immediately. Perfect, Xbox One. So we'll move it into position. And there we go, that's probably as good as it's gonna get. Okay, nice, yeah.
It's looking good. I really like it. But I think you can see one glaring problem. It's kind of just there. There's really not... There isn't like a... A smoothing in to this green. It doesn't smoothly make its way through. Well, we gotta change that. Because if you just... If you, if you were in like the professional racing world... And you just slapped your sponsors on there... That would imply that you didn't care. But if... You got a sponsor in this climate of racing... You need to pre at least pretend like you care. Otherwise you're gonna lose your sponsor. And that'd just suck dick, wouldn't it? Well, here's how we're going to fix this. Okay, so let's go back to, I'm gonna put that back on the lasso tool because I like it better like that. We'll go over here, once again, make our layer via copy. And we're gonna put it underneath the last um, one so that I don't cover up the Xbox logo because if I hadn't done this, if I made it bigger, it would have just covered up the Xbox logo, so that's why I moved it back. Okay. And now the whole back end is going to be green. And that's going to be pretty abrupt, don't you think? Just going from blue to green like that. There needs to be a transition between the colors. And doing that, this is how we're going to do that. I really don't want to explain this one. I've lost all patience, though. So. Uh, we'll just nudge these over a little bit more. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Uh, maybe a little less. Okay, there you go. I hope you're just following along visually at this point, because I just do not have the patience to make the rest of this video. Okay, so we got all this. So we're going to merge the, uh, these two layers here. But you want to make sure... Um, no, don't duplicate. We're going to merge layers, okay. So, okay, so here's our color fill. Rasterize that layer, so now we got ourselves a blue truck. What we need to do from here is grab this, make another layer via copy, and no, oh, oh my god, it moves that little thingamajig in the center, it's so annoying. Okay, we'll move it there and bring it all the way across. I hope you're just following along at this point because I really don't want to verbally explain this. I'm starting to lose my voice. Okay. We're going to merge the layers for these little bitty bits and the part that I put right behind it. We're going to merge those. So merge those layers. Now, we're going to zoom way in again. And now we're going to go to our smudge tool. The smudge tool is going to make this not such an abrupt transition. As you can see, it's just a straight line. Doesn't even look like... Doesn't look natural. We're going to make it look look natural by smudging this so that instead of being straight from blue to green, it's a little bit of a gradient. Not too much of a gradient, though. Because we kind of want to make it look... Because I use this... I base it off the Matt Kenseth Home Depot on the back end of his car paint scheme. Where it's, um, like, I don't know what his regular sponsor is on the car. Like, whatever, Stanley Tools or whatever. But the back is Home Depot and it's all orange and stuff. But the rest of the truck is an orange and the back is kind of just bleeds into the blue well whatever or whatever color so there you go now we zoom out and it's a lot more natural transition than if the whole back end was just green we're just about done here um one more thing that we do need to do before anything else happens is i'm going to duplicate this i'm going to move it over there and i'm going to move this layer all the way to the top so it's above everything, including the shading. This is the rear tail end tail light number. We'll shrink it all the way down and put it ahead of the tail. And there you go. That's all for that. One more thing before we get to the rest of this. We'll go to uh, my documents here. And we'll get the Twisted T-Truck Series logo. I have all those comments that I need to 
do a comment video on, but I never got around to it. So let's shrink it on down. Zoom on in. And then we move it over top. Approximate the size. You kind of got to uh, approximate the size. It's got to be a bit bigger. Perfect. Maybe it's a bit too big, but it doesn't matter. We'll just duplicate it again here. No. Why? Up. Go up. You fucking cuck. Anyway. And there you have it. There's the Twisted T Trucks. No! Twisted T Truck Series logo. Flip it upside down 180. And cover up the old and obsolete Camping World logo. And ain't that just... Just beautiful. Isn't this truck just beautiful thus far? Well, we still have a couple more sponsors to go, so let's go get Logitech. And we're essentially done at this point. After this... Oh, which one do I pick? Lots of these logos are shit. This one's not bad. We'll use this one. At this point, I'd go into the game itself and make up the... Uh, game the, the file for the car itself and then you'd go to a program called windmip2.exe you can get it on um, 2k3 Weebly you go to the car editor and then you'd pick out well what I'd do is pick out any one of these guys besides the one that I'm gonna currently make because when I do that we'll be able to um, the uh, Ratings are going to be identical across the board here. So all of these ratings are identical. And what I'd do is I'd import the texture, save the file over the uh, other one. I'd save the file over um, the one that I'd be creating for this one. But I can't actually, I'm going to keep that open so I can put this in when I'm ready. But um, God, look at the size of this. That's so stupid. All right, we'll just do it like this then. Get rid of this shit and plop that in. God, look at the size of that. That's fucking sad. All right, uh, let's do the quick select tool. Make it a bit smaller. There we go. Wow. This is the most raggedy freaking selection anything. Yeah, we can't. We can't do this one. We can't use this one. It's too fucking small. Get rid of it. Fuck you. Okay. No. Fuck you, I said. Logitech logo. Let's get a different one here. This will have to do. So, pick that out. Plop it in. Color range. Invert from white. And move it on over. Okay, so this one's going to blend in with the blue. But we have a solution. Don't worry. Don't worry. Go to your effects. You can do like a stroke. In this case, we'd probably make it white. And that way you'd be able to see it. As you can see, there's a little bit of a bleeding going on there. So I might want to defringe this quick. Defringe is your best friend, by the way. Defringe is my favorite part of Photoshop. There we go. It's not quite perfect, but it'll do. And there's your Logitech logo. Now, we gotta make it symmetrical. To the other side with the... Bloop, bloop, bloop. Oh, man, this video is very strenuous. I'm starting to get sick of doing it. Now we also need Motorola, so... Okay, Motorola. Motorola! Motorola logo. <laughs> this one will have to do. Actually, no, it's blue. It didn't blend in too much with the other one. Let's do this black and white one. This will work. Okay. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky. Because. When you have a PNG, it gives you a black background. Which is very inconvenient if your image is black and white. So, 
what we need to do is make get ourselves the elliptical marquee tool yay and we'll make ourselves a circle by using the uh, shift key and then you know sizing it I'm gonna eyeball this once again and now that's all ready we can move it over ta-da Motorola Yay. Now that can go right there. And it can zoopity doo, zippity zoo, doo doo doo, all the way over yonder. Flip upside down. Symmetry. Symmetry, motherfucker. So let's get this Hot Wheels logo. We'll put it here just for, uh, because I don't know what else to put on the sides here. So we'll just do it like that. And one more this side and I do believe actually let's move it over here I do believe we have a finished truck and there you have it that is making a twisted T truck series truck using templates what you can always do is you can go over to your driver's suit you can get a color overlay on that you can make it black if you want to Sure, why not? A helm. A helm. Can have a color overlay on that too. Let's make it green. Let's make it match the Xbox One. There you have it. We got this tape here that looks ridiculous. Let's color overlay that so that it's like white or something. Let's get some black duck to. What the fuck did I just do? Oh god, no. Hello? Uh. Help. Escape. Oh no. And for the past 50 minutes are now, um, wasted, because I didn't save for several, several minutes. I only saved immediately as I begun, and this truck will never see the light of day in all likelihood. And there goes that. It opened this up 15,000 fucking times. Let's see if it's going to be generous to me today. Is it going to give me an auto recovery file? Please. Let's start closing out of these 5,000 fucking tabs. Thank you, by the way, Photoshop. It's making my fucking... It'd just be best to close this whole thing down altogether. Hello? Oh, yep, there we go. Wait, never mind. Okay, we just have to do a couple of different things here. But yeah, um... Here is a reason why you should, um, save periodically. Be sure to save your Photoshop documents on a frequent basis. Why don't we do that now? There you go. There you go. I think you get the idea. This was 53 minutes long and miserable to make. I hope you understand where I'm coming from as far as this is concerned. Make us some sexy ass trucks. Have yourselves a nice day. And all that good shit. And don't try and change the color on these apparently. Otherwise, you'll get 12,000 fucking help things after the thing crashes for no well explained reason. And that was making a twisted tea truck. Goodbye!